do us a quick favor guys hit the follow subscribe button share this with someone who would benefit from it and help us grow as the more we grow the better the episodes we get thanks guys for helping us and let's get into the episode let me read that again confidence means recognizing something isn't working and having the flexibility and knowledge to make adjustments cockiness is the inability to admit when something isn't working and repeating the same mistakes over and over again because you stubbornly can't admit when you're wrong now that is very powerful i really like that because the relentless series taken by the sculpted podcast He never dunked on you. He never put you on the highlight. What a performance. What an exit for number 24. Helping you unleash relentless greatness from within. Welcome back to the Zelda Sculpted Podcast. In today's episode, we're going through Trap Start. Eight of Renalus, and we are going. Well, the chapter is called "When Everyone Is Hitting the In Case of Emergency Button, They're All Looking for You." Page one hundred and nine, and I like this one. Should be good. I think it is. How many pages? That is thirteen. Around 15 pages. All right, let's go. So, when everyone is hitting the in case of emergency button, they're all looking for you. The cooler waits for you to tell him the plan. A closer works in the plan, studies it, memorizes it, and knows exactly what he has to do. Actually, he doesn't want a specific plan. He wants every possible option available to him at all times. Controversial to me. Now, controversial in the way I mean that I would think that a cleaner does what a closer does and i would think that the cleaner in this situation would do what the closer does i think i've repeated myself anyways that's i think that the cleaner and closer be are the opposite what i would think now in this chapter it goes on about how it's more of a progression but i've got a new idea and I've, I've written down the off season isn't a break time. It's the exact opposite. It's I've written the G word, which we shan't prepare from this podcast, but we were all interchanged with sculpting. So did. Um, okay. So the, the next page is not more, more personal. Notes, so I've got even when I'm 25, I will still be working harder. This will keep me accountable. Interesting. I like that. A bit of self accountability. Quite written when I was around 15. All right. Now everyone is watching you to see how you're going to manage the situation. That seems unmanageable, and you better and you better be able to figure it out fast. I'm 100% certain that if you bring me into any situation, I'm going to have a positive impact on you. There's no way I'm going to show up and not be uh, prepared, and have and not have something to offer you. If you're willing to listen to what I'm asking you. Tell me what I need to know and follow what I said. You're going to have some improvement. If that sounds like arrogant swagger, fine with me. I'm confident in what I do because I know whatever happens, I'm going to adjust and keep rolling. Not everything works the first time. Sometimes it doesn't work at all, but there's a difference between confidence and copiers. Confidence means recognizing something isn't working and having the flexibility to know, to knowledge and knowledge to make adjustments. Cockiness is the inability to admit when something isn't working and repeating the same mistake over and over again because you stubbornly can't admit you're wrong. Let me read that again. Confidence means recognizing something isn't working and having the flexibility and knowledge to make adjustments. Cockiness is the inability to admit when something isn't working 
and repeating the same mistakes over and over again because you stubbornly can't admit when you're wrong. Now that is very powerful. I really like that because so many people talk about arrogance and they talk about how arrogance is a bad thing. This has explained it. That to me has settled the debate. Like, I think that excuses arrogance because that's not a bad thing at all. What 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 is above that is saying that if I am wrong, that's okay. It might not work. And this goes into my philosophy of believing that it works and going with one hundred percent conviction is better than going with fifty percent or ninety five percent. Being so convicted in what you were doing that it's the right way of doing it, there is much more power and influence in doing that than going at less than 100% conviction. Arrogance swagger, that's fine. That's powerful, guys. You've got to remember that one, all right? I'm probably going to hear right. Sounds great, but that's not really how we do it here. Well, yeah, if that were how you do it, I wouldn't be here, but I am here. And now you have to adopt to what I'm telling you, what works for me. That's a cleanest job. Not everyone wants that job. Very powerful, Hunt Pazer. What I have here is challenges give me, gives and present great opportunities to thrive and flourish. Now, I like that. That's quite a simple philosophy. I think it's clear. If it wasn't for a challenge, then you have nothing to prove. A challenge shows character, it shows clocks, it shows that someone's really about it. Let's go for my current situation, right? If I am able to become better because of my current situation, if you're listening for the first time, I recently had to get surgery. Doctors thought I may have cancer. I have to go there tomorrow again to check that it's not, so that's not ruled out. But if I am able to get in a better situation because of my current situation, then that's a test of character. That's a test that I'm truly about it. That's, that's, that's testing every single core of my philosophies. It's, it's, it's really a test. And what drives me to make sure that I make sure that, that make sure that I come out on top of this is that if I don't, then I was never really about it. But if I do come out on top, I'm about it and I'm still about it and I'm still going to make it work. The next thing I highlighted, I'm going to own it. Responsibility. Nothing feels risky to a cleaner. Whatever happens, he'll know what to do. And that's good and bad, right? If he fails, he knows what to do. If he doesn't, he knows what to do. So therefore, if he knows what to do with either reaction, so what? Deal with it. And the cleaner will. A closer will feel fear first. A cleaner will instantly feel his survival instincts kick in, giving him a rush of options. And he knows one of them will work because he's already considered 30 variables before going into the building. A cooler would never be given that kind of assignment, so we don't even have to address it yet. What I've highlighted is prepare for everything. How do you prepare for everything? You can't. But... What it means, and my interpretation of this, it's not, it's not preparing for everything in terms of, you know, I've got my art hack here, like I do before every game, training session, whatever, and I'm writing down all my notes, and I'm writing out every single possible situation. It's not that. Now, of course, that will help you to get to the, to the point where I'm going to say where you need to be, but it's living those experiences it's reprogramming your brain so that when a situation pops up you are able to immediately identify the solution for it now very hard complex uh like a very hard philosophy to kind of get your head around now i'm going to try to think of a way to explain it to you now it's it's problem solving and it's quick solutions through pattern recognition so if i was given different vegetables in front of me and Gordon Ramsay told me to cook up the most delicious meal in the world, okay? Let's say he gives me just vegetables and two tablespoons of olive oil and a pinch of salt. With this in front of me, I have to make the best situation out of what I have in front of me. 
someone who instinctively knows what to do because of their, their meticulous preparation, right? They've lived it before. They have figured out how to do it in front of them. For them seeing this vegetable, olive oil, and salt in front of them for the first time, they know what to do. And they, even if it's wrong, they think that they know what to do, okay? Because they know that the chances of them finding the actual way of doing it, even if that chance is 5% or, or less, they're better off for believing that the way that they're doing it is the right way. Because that's going to help them get to that right way of doing it as nearly or as close as possible. So then the next situation would be putting a closer in that situation, the cleaner would make it work. The closer, what would they do? Well, they might be looking around their scenario, the situation, their environment, trying to figure out, okay, what's our person doing? What, what's our person doing? Maybe they wrote a pre-game plan, and then it turns out, oh, looks like we only get two tablespoons of oil, and in my preparation, it was three. Okay, what do I do? Well, I guess I just got to do what I was doing before. Maybe I'll give it a go, but the cleaner, they're like, no, you know what? Not what I thought, but that doesn't matter because I already know that there's a better way of doing it this way. And that only comes through experience and meticulous planning. And it's it's not easy. You have to reprogram yourself, you know, and it has to take time. The more you fail, the better you'll get. It's a refinement process. And that's where a lot of power lies. You just know what to do. You don't even know how you know. You just know. Now, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You've programmed yourself. I'm talking about being so prepared with so many options and so much experience that you truly are ready for anything. Everything that happens after that moment goes on, goes one of two ways. The athlete either immediately runs it around and comes back to perform at an insanely high level, or he can't recover and gets worse from there. Why can some adapt to unexpected twists and others completely fall apart? That's what I was saying there. It's, I believe it has to do with quite a few things, but I think conviction is a massive part. You can plan and prepare for 10 different scenarios, be completely ready for every variable you anticipated, and you can be sure there will be even an 11th scenario you never saw coming. Most people are ready for one scenario. They can't even envision 10. They're completely paralyzed by it, all the possible variables. Then when one thing goes wrong, they can't adjust. Now that's what that's what the cleaner does. Even though he prepared, that situation didn't happen, and instead of failing, he makes it work. Doesn't get stressed by it. He doesn't feel like he's lost the plot. He's got control. He makes it work. When something goes off the rails, his instincts immediately take over and he adapts. He just knows. Whatever you're showing him, he's ready. No fear or failure. Preparation. Now I'll put some notes in. This present thinking is of self-evaluation, not fairly. Okay. That, that's, that's true. So it's being present with the moment, right? What is in front of you you can't change that it's in front of you now? You can only change your your uh, your actions and what you're going to do in the future, right? It's in your control. If you were expecting three tablespoons of oil and you got two in front of you, well, you can't get three anymore, so you better do your best with two. Can you recognize the mistake and snap it back? You have to be willing to fail. If you're going to trust yourself to act from the gut and then adapt as you go, that's the confidence or swagger that allows you to take risks and know whatever happens, you'll figure it out. Adapt and adapt again. Now my notes are work smarter and harder. Yeah, very true. You have to be a cooler, closer and cleaner, which is the process of refinement. And you have to adjust whilst being present. That's how I learned you figure it out. Instinctive decision for the better. Total cleaner. Being relentless means having the courage to say, I'm going for this. And if I roll it, I'll make a change and I'll still be fine. That's where the 100% conviction comes in. You can only control your response and your ability to navigate the unpredictable. Whatever happens, you have the smartest skills to figure it out and arrive 
at the outcome you wanted in the first place. Plan for un uh, uncomfortable. Plan for uncomfortability. This is where your morals come to play. Don't let the dark side take over. You control it. Now that's my own notes there. And plan for uncomfortability. This is where your morals come to play. That's interesting, right? So what, what I mean by that, and now of course, this one is an older note. Be okay with being uncomfortable. That's good. Expect it. Be okay with it. Thanks. Yeah, cheers, sir. That's the old Apple Watch. Um, pad for it. Be okay with it. But what comes with that? It's going to test you as an individual. It's going to test your morals. Right? For me, let's think about my situation. My health condition. It's going to test my professionalism, dedication, and effort. Do I stand by it? Or do I not? It's uncomfortable. But I know that if I can stay as professional, dedicated, and, and give as much effort as possible, I will get through it. And I'll be better because of it. It's going to test me. And I, I might not know the answer right now, but I know that it's, as long as I am acting in alignment with where I want to go, as long as I am journaling, making sure that I am, you know, when I do my journey, I'm, I'm writing down how I'm acting professional, how I'm acting dedicated, how I'm giving as much effort as in, into situations as possible. I'm staying aligned, even when it's not the best situation. I know that when I act in alignment with those three things every single day, I can find an answer. I might not see it immediately, but I know when I act in alignment with those three things every single day, I'm closer and closer. It's entirely possible to rely on instinct and still make the wrong decision. But, but cleaners are okay with that. Fears know that they can deal with the repercussions of being wrong. In the long run, he's going to benefit from that flash more often than not. He miss 100% of the shots he don't take. A cleaner, he feels no pressure when he screws up and he has no problem admitting when he's wrong and shouldering the blade. When a cleaner makes a mistake, he can look at you in the eye and say, I effed up. That's it. Confident, simple, factual, no explanation. You made a mistake? Fine. Don't explain to me for a now. The truth is one sentence. As soon as you start giving me reasons, I know you have something to hide. You effed up. Say it. You can't fix something unless you admit it. Now, only you have one objective to resolve that issue. I really like that. Oh, no, move on from it. The more you dwell, the more you neglect, it means you're hiding something. You just own it. It's just so much easier that way. Some of that I've adopted part of it, actually. You screwed up, admit it. Cleaners will just get in your face and announce that you effed up. They're completely desensitized. No emotions. I like that. And I think that I'm at that point where I am completely desensitized from emotions and from uh, outcome or dictation of something. Then they have no problem admitting what something has gone wrong. No problem. I never think of them as failures. Once you start there, others, you're admitting that you had no control over the situation. And without that control, you can't create a solution. Interesting. Shifting the blame means you don't have control. Now, that's also a little bit counterintuitive to Peter's getting in your face and announcing that you have thought. Now, what would a real cleaner do? Would they get in your face and announcing that you have thought? Or would they just... As it says, once you start blaming others, you're admitting that you have no control. So would they just move on with that same control? I believe that if I was in that situation, I wouldn't blame the others. I would just take control for the situation in front of me. When you can laugh at yourself and not take every setback seriously, that's confidence. I like that. When you laugh at yourself, when you can laugh at yourself and not take every setback seriously, that's confidence. When someone says something to you that you don't like or you don't want to see it and you allow it to pressure you on, even for a moment, that's a confidence problem. And I think a lot of people have that. I think a lot of people have that. I don't think many people know where confidence comes from. I don't think people know what work it takes to be confident. I think confidence is kind of a buzzword that people throw around. And I think that often the solution to confidence these days is a false sense of confidence. And no one really knows where that confidence comes from. I believe I do. I believe that what I say works. And it's not just my teachings. I think it's written in science. I think it's written in evidence. Things written through the athlete's success. 
stay in the line with your morals makes a lot of sense. Why would why would it be that if you need to be confident and no one can roll through what moves you, you have a filter where everything outside of that filter means nothing to you. Everything within that filter is criticism or reaffirmation or, or it's reaffirmation of what you're doing. Confidence comes from staying strong and acting within your laurels. For me, as you know, professionalism, dedication, and effort. The more I act within those things, the more I know who I am, and the more I know how I act. When someone counteracts that and they say that I'm not or they show me that I'm not, that either they don't know me well enough or maybe they're right. If they're right, I take it on board and I refine myself even more and I become better because of it. If they're wrong, they just don't know me enough. That's fine. They don't, they don't need to know me enough. Tell me more about them than me. If they're really judging me on, on knowing me for a few minutes or, or not long enough, then I know more about them. Cheaters always have the confidence to know they'll get it right, accept the consequences and move on. If you want to be the best, you never have the luxury of shrugging off about the forwards. You face it, fix it, and prepare to do better next time. Let's find out. When I work with Toby, we try a lot of new things. He's so dedicated to his workouts. When we worked on something new, he has a rough game. He's had a rough game. I don't know. That's right. I looked to him and wonder what he did wrong. I put the pressure on myself to figure out what I need to do for him differently. Which is Tim talking about when he's learning with Kobe. It's not about what did Kobe do, it's what did I do. So dictated Kobe to react in that specific way. How can I be better trainer because of that? Tim says, my responsibility not hit. And Kobe's thinking the exact same thing. He's thinking, okay, well, how can I make sure that this happens? How can I work with Tim who's helping me get to this level? It's a two-way relationship where they're both thinking the exact opposite about each other, basically. When you've been working at one speed and suddenly you can move a lot faster, your timing is going to be jacked. Now, okay, this is talking about sort of physical stuff. But to me, it was all my responsibility and I blew it. My fault. I know it doesn't sound like a big deal, but to me, it was a very big deal because I missed something I shouldn't have missed. He could have played even better and they could have won by more. Now, this is Tim talking about how unsatiated it is. When I'm wrong, I'll tell you, that's internal pressure at work, self-accountability. But because you want to want to be the best and have the confidence to say you screwed up, the people will respect you for it. If you did it, own it. That's your reputation. Also, I'll, I'll reiterate, if you did it, own it. That's good and bad. If you did it good, own it. If you did it bad, own it. Two things you can't let anyone take from you. You can't let them take away your reputation and you can't let them take away your balls. That means accepting the pressure of taking responsibility for everything you say and do. The more educated you become, the more heightened your ability to adopt, to adapt to situations because experience gives you a better understanding of nuance. The tiny details no one would think of or recognize as important. That's what I'm talking about with the, pre uh, with the programming of your brain. The experience, right? You have to be able to learn from the situation, to experience the situation, to live them out, good and bad. You have to go through it. There's no other way. It's long, it's monogamous, it's boring, it's painful, but you have to go through it. I want to put together your own composite of that. Taking what you know and believe, adding what others have taught you, combining everything you've learned and creating your own set of beliefs. I like that. And I do that myself. Not replicating, but sculpting your own. That's a note for myself there. You know when to go slow and when to go full out. Instinct, not impulse. We'll do it this way. Conversation over, clean. That's what a cleaners do. They ignore panicking and complaining. They clean up the problem and they make it work. The close up will adjust himself into the situation. The cleaner adjusts the situation to himself. A closer has to know what he's doing, what he's going to do. He'll know the original plan and he'll follow it and feels right to him, but his skills and the intuition are so great that he would usually improvise as he goes. He can't help it. He just goes with the flow of the action, whatever his instincts take him. Now, that's the end of the chapter. And I think the main thing that I have to reinforce here is just, it comes through experience, it comes through it comes to sculpting your own your own mind. I think that's really thin there. Because a lot of these things to you are probably foreign. They should be foreign. Because it, 
most people who are listening to this probably haven't gone through crazy life experiences, crazy experiences to where they're constantly being challenged. It shouldn't make too much sense to you. And if it doesn't, be okay with that, but just make sure that you live it and you don't stop because of it, right? These challenges, these things in your way aren't going to continue you in the long run if you stay with it. They will help you, okay? So with that being said, that's it. Uh, that's it. That's it. That's it. done. So, yeah, thank you guys for checking into this episode and um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I think we're probably halfway to the list now, so, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. And... Please like, share, subscribe, follow, whatever, comment, share with friends, all of that stuff here. We try to grow sculpted. Sculpted is a movement. We want to we want to sculpt the culture around sculpting. Okay, sculpted app. It's coming soon. I'm getting the Kickstarter up and running. Um, if you're going to find more, make sure you subscribe to our LinkedIn newsletter. That's where we keep a lot of updates. And yeah, it's um it's exciting. I'm very excited about it. And I think one big thing is we want Tim Grover to be involved. We want Tim Grover to be involved. And it's probably one of the first times I've been openly speaking about this on the podcast is that we want Tim Grover in this podcast. We want him to be a part of it. Obviously, you can see I'm really relentless. We have a lot of philosophies of Sculpted based from Tim Grover's teachings. And I think that it just makes sense for Tim Grover to be a part of Sculpted, right? The legacy. I can see it. I hope you can see it. What you can do to help us get this Tim Grover... I mean, honestly, you'd be helping yourself if you get us to grab it. But what you can do, let's grow the podcast, right? Share it. Subscribe. Interact with us, you know? We're here. Tim Grover is there. He doesn't know about us yet. But we've got to get him in front of him. Anyways, guys, thank you for listening. And we'll catch you on the next episode.